Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to my beginner's guide to Crystalline Conflict, the new PvP mode added in patch 6.1 in Final Fantasy XIV. It's a new mode and it's only been out a week, so I'm seeing a lot of people not noticing certain things about the gameplay elements or UI, and I just want to help you have a little bit more agency over your victories. So in this video, I'm going to cover all sorts of tips and tricks. There's going to be a lot of little things, so I'll definitely put timestamps in the description because I'm sure they'll be easy to miss. So first off, the new mode is unlocked automatically if you had the feast unlocked before, but otherwise you can unlock it upon hitting level 30 and visiting your grand company. Complete the quest a pup no longer and you'll be all set. This will unlock both the casual and ranked match options. Casual matches are for players just looking to mess around in the 5v5 two-way payload mode that is Crystalline Conflict, maybe earn some EXP, tombstones, or work towards their series rewards, which we'll cover in a second. The ranked mode allows you to climb through the ranks to attempt to claim seasonal rewards, mainly customization options for your adventurer portrait and trophy crystals, another new currency added in this patch for PvP. Competing in Crystalline Conflict and Frontlines as of patch 6.1 will also net you series EXP, which I just mentioned, which allows you to progress a battle pass style reward system. The series will be available until the next major patch, aka from patch 6.1 until 6.2, then until 6.3 for the next one, etc, etc. Now before going into Crystalline Conflict, visit the Wolves Den and set up your PvP hotbars and HUD. PvP uses a completely different set of skills found in your PvP profile in your character options. Read these carefully, as each job has different interactions within their own kit and different PvP skills altogether. You also have several skills that are consistent across every job you'll play, and we'll cover those right now. First is Purify, which will cleanse debuffs, and it's SUPPOSED to let you be immune to them for a few seconds. But trust me, don't rely on that part. It either works inconsistently or not at all, something we're hoping to see them address in the future. Guard allows you to take greatly reduced damage for a few seconds while greatly reducing your movement speed and halting you from doing all attacks. Reactivating the button or pressing any other action will cancel the guard as well, so it's important that you don't accidentally double tap the guard button or try to panic activate other skills as a response. Also, damage over time effects applied before guard will not have their damage reduced by it, so don't be surprised by a random mid-guard death if you happen to have a bunch of dots on you, especially considering there's also some skills that just go right through guard. Then you have Recuperate. This is a 15,000 health heal that consumes 2,500 MP. In PvP, you have 10,000 MP, and it is used solely for this skill, regenerating 500 MP every 3 seconds. Try to use this when you are being jumped on or when facing off against people in skirmishes to keep yourself healthy. Try not to wait until you're almost dead to start using it either. You probably want to use it when you start taking damage to dissuade the pursuit, not to panic try to survive when you're already on the back foot. Next is Sprint. In PvP, this version of the ability will remain on after you activate it indefinitely, at least until you use any other action or reactivate Sprint. This means you should pretty much turn it on before getting into a fight and consider activating it mid-fight to escape or chase down opponents who are out of range if need be. If you're trying to escape, remember that using any other skill stops it, including Recuperate, Purify, or any of your actual job skills, so don't be surprised if you need to toggle it a few times to keep up the speed. Finally is your standard issue elixir. This is a full health and MP heal at the cost of a 4.5 second cast time. When you barely survive a fight or run out of MP for Recuperate, consider retreating a safe distance and using one of these. Also, if you've just won a fight and your team is pushing the crystal, try to use it before the enemy team respawns to fully reset your health and MP. All of these skills are essential, but bear in mind that, as of this video, they don't have the best responsiveness. Not only do you have to be quick to activate them, you also have to accept that they may not activate in time. This can lead to double tapping sometimes, being required to even activate the skills, and then sometimes double tapping causes you to do things like cancel guard. Hopefully this gets adjusted in the future, as it's one of the few elements of PvP that they did not nail in this patch. Also, don't forget to throw in some quick chats on your hotbar. Hello, good match, limit break, ready, fall back, and retreat, and attacking target are all really helpful to communicate mid-match. More advanced players even use unique macros to count down burst windows and target specific allies or enemies, but that's something for a more advanced PvP guide. 
As for your HUD, the big thing that people wonder is how do you move the PvP specific information to more visible locations? What you need to do is go into your HUD layout while you're in the Wolves Den and select the Duty option. This will allow you to move things such as ally and enemy health bars, information regarding kills, and map specific hazards. Also consider moving things like normal health and MP, buffs and debuffs if you're having trouble tracking those. Fortunately, you can have up to four HUDs saved, so this shouldn't be a problem. Now that your hotbars are set up and you've totally read what your skills do, it's time to PvP. While you can do front lines for a large scale battle, I'll be focusing on crystalline conflict for this video. Throw yourself into some casual matches first to get the hang of things before diving into the chaos that is ranked. There are three maps you can be thrown into for the crystalline conflict. The Palestra, the Volcanic Heart, and Cloud9. These maps rotate every 90 minutes with the current and next map listed by scrolling down in the duty finder under casual or ranked match. The Palestra is a simple map. It has two sprint lanes to get around the map a bit faster, which you should keep in mind for getting behind enemy teams, catching back up to fights after you've been defeated, or escaping opponents quickly. The Volcanic Heart is full of pillars and gates with a large T-shaped sprint lane to help traverse the arena. Casters will need to do some extra work to land casts because of all the pillars you get constantly line of sighted. So try to find angles close to the pillars so you can peek out for your casts and then potentially hide from enemy casts as well. It also drops bombs occasionally, which do giant cross-shaped AoEs for big damage. Try to use crowd control skills like stuns or binds to lock players in these explosions. They also leave behind orbs that give you the hardcore buff, granting you increased damage. It's a stacking buff, so try to grab these as they fall near the fight, deny them from the enemy, and then if you need to retreat, consider grabbing the ones that are back closer to your base. You probably don't want to run around playing Pac-Man while your team is trying to fight 4v5. Probably not going to work out in your favor. Maybe, but probably not. The Cloud9 map is more open, but has jump panels instead of sprint lanes. These let you jump to the middle of the map in a flash, and even to the enemy base if you've pushed up far enough to get you back into the push. It does also have the Turbulence Hazard, which will knock players into the air, dealing heavy damage when they land. This knockup can be avoided in a few ways. First are these Chocobo Feathers on the arena, designated by these moving Chocobo symbols. Right before Turbulence occurs, they will dash around to an end spot. If you're standing in them when the turbulence goes out, you will be knocked into a black feather, negating the fall damage, granting some limit gauge, and giving you a haste buff. However, only one person can receive the feather per spot, so if multiple people are standing on it, don't be surprised if you get denied. The other ways to avoid this are to use guard right before turbulence goes off, or to use something like the Dragoon Limit Break before the knockup, which you can then use as soon as they land in order to finish them off. The Turbulence then leaves behind some tornadoes that swirl around the arena, dealing high damage and breaking any guard on players that they actually impact. Be careful around them, but also consider pulling or pushing players into them for a quick kill. Now for general tips when PvPing, first of all, if you get jumped, immediately try to purify and guard. While the responsiveness makes this kind of a crapshoot, you really need to try and survive being jumped on instantly before turning and blasting them right back. If you see someone enter guard, consider timing stun, silences, and burst damage on them right as it ends to eliminate them during their weakest point, or at least run their MP dry. Just don't forget, there are four other people trying to kill you at the same time. Now, if you're missing health, also consider grabbing one of the potions around the map real quick. This saves MP, but more importantly, you can use this strategically in a fight. Fighting against someone 1v1 or diving the back line, just run and grab the potion real quick so the enemy team can't grab it instead, denying them that extra resource. It's really nice if you're a job with a stun because you can watch someone running for it, beelining for it, it's their last ditch effort to survive, and you stun them and walk right over to the potion and now they've got nowhere to go. Heck, even standing on a potion at full health when you're pushing, just to instantly deny it from any enemy that hits you in the process is a big swing for the game. If you hit low health from a fight but manage to barely escape, remember, be sure to retreat and channel your elixir if you can. Fully healing with recuperate is nice, but then if you just jump back in with no MP, you're just going to get bursted down again, and this time you have nothing to resort to. So, unless your team looks like they're going to be winning if you jump back in, or are already winning massively, just go back and use the elixir. Also, remember, use them as you're pushing after you win a fight. 
On that same vein, if you see an enemy charging an elixir on the party list, really quickly see if they are in range and you can run around a corner and get them, or if they're just really brazenly trying to use it out in the open. Because if you can interrupt it and focus them down, you're going to be at a huge advantage. Just remember, you might be diving into a place that could also get you killed by their teammates. Sometimes players do just stop paying attention during this and become ripe for the picking, though. Also, if someone is low on MP and isn't retreating to use an elixir, mark them down and focus them real quick. Now, for winning fights, coordinating limit breaks can swing a game or close a game out very quickly. That goes for both you and your enemy, so you really want to be tracking limit breaks. Fortunately, the party lists do actually show everyone's limit gauge at all times. It's the bar right under their job icon, where aggro would normally be in PvE. Just remember to actually use your limit break and don't just hold it the whole game for that one perfect YouTube worthy moment. This isn't Party Finder, use your limit break. Oh, and this one's a big one, push the crystal. This is the first and most important objective. So as long as you maintain control over it, you will be winning the game. That being said, not everyone needs to be in the crystal's range. Squishier range jobs should exercise caution and leave this to melee and tanks during team fights, only stepping forward for guard or for specific skills. If you're winning and your melee are chasing down kills, also step into the crystal range as a ranged job to ensure you're actually making progress. Just ensure not to get too chase happy and return to your point at, well, some point. Now, if it hits overtime, though, you do need to very carefully be tracking who is standing on the crystal if your team is on the back foot. Sometimes it's worth charging in with guard to stop the game from ending just to buy your team a few more seconds to hopefully get back into the fight. Just try to find a way out as you're doing this at the same time. Now, if you're already winning, do anything possible to keep them off the point to end the game. Sometimes players just forget in the middle of a fight to stand on it during overtime, and sometimes you just want to use something like a knockback or a pull-in to just end the game swiftly. It's just going to depend on each and every situation and composition you find yourself playing with. I guess speaking of overtime, I should probably clarify the win conditions, because I think there's a lot of confusion about that. Now, if your team is ahead in the percentage bar up top, pushing the losing team completely off the crystal will win the game. If the team losing in percentage to the top pushes the crystal past the winning team's percentage, they win. If both teams are at 50%, it'll be whoever clears the checkpoint and moves it just that one extra step that claims the win. And if both teams are at the same percentage, whether it be 50 or somehow 100, then everyone leaving the crystal will end the game in a draw. It's the only way to get that. There do seem to be other possible draw conditions, but these are the basics. Speaking of tracking allies and enemies, you can change display name settings to make identifying enemies a bit easier. Change this along with target settings to try and get onto the right players. You can also change the size of names in PvP, but that will occur for your allies as well, so you might want to turn off ally nameplates if you're going this route. I'd also highly recommend marking players depending on whether you want your party to attack them, want them to ignore them, or even just to keep track of where they are on the map for some quick targeting. All that stuff really helps, and in the higher ranks you'll definitely see countdown macros in order to coordinate bursts, but again, we'll leave that for a more advanced video. Now I could probably go on all day with all sorts of bits of tips and advice that involve individual jobs and limit breaks and combos, but I think we need to save that for more advanced guides and videos because otherwise we're going to be here all day. So with that, hopefully I've given you a bit of useful information, something that will assist you in the knowledge and the understanding you have and finally, finally get you out of bronze. But with that, it's been fun. Like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. <laughs>